Am Digital Media Studio. It's Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Here's your host, Dan Canterbury. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We're back after Easter break. I hope everybody had a great Easter. I know a lot of people went out and traveled, had some pretty good weather, had some uh, baseball going on, and uh, a lot to talk about tonight. We're looking forward to a great show, and welcome everybody back to Hold the Rope. And uh, I'm here with Skip Bergman and Coach how are you doing after the break? I'm uh, doing great. It's good to be back. Uh, a lot of good news from uh, sports, uh, you know, from LSU and general news that we'd like to give throughout the night. We have great guests, so we're ready. Got a great guest tonight. Uh, we want to thank uh, Bob Starkey. He's going to be here from the National Championship uh, with Lady Basketball Tigers. He's coming on board. we got a lot to talk about. Bob, one of our favorite guys, been at LSU forever. And Skip, uh, I got to say, I think Starkey uh, had a lot to do with the national championship, his presence and uh, his history. Sure. He's been there, you know, uh, with all of the other lady coaches. Uh, well, the man coach that's... Uh, Van Chancellor. Van. By the way, we had a fact here. Did you know that every time that the women have been to the Final Four, Bob Starkey's been on the bench? Every <laughs> single time. <laughs> He's been a coach. He was the head coach the last time they went. Well, he was the he was the head coach, the last time. Yeah. Okay, uh, because the head coach took a job somewhere. Okay, and he was bumped up to for that night. Now, he didn't want to be the head coach. Never wanted to be a head coach. And I said to him, Bob, just do this night. <laughs> and uh, he understood. He tried. You know, we lost, but uh, we lost a couple that should have been won. Like Van Chancellor had a bad break, and uh, Pookie Chapman had a bad break. You know, like I've seen those things happen in baseball, and of course they happen in basketball, of course. And uh, they, you know, it's been club, but I'm glad that uh, they're there now, and that's the end of it. We got it going, and I'm glad that Starkey's with us tonight. He's a great human being, Wonderful great guy, person. great guest, and. Uh, he helped tie all the alumni back in. It was nice to see Simone Augustus at the, mm -hmm. at the event. We'll talk about that more later. Right now, though, we want to talk about softball, women's softball, split with Auburn over the weekend, and then they just finished. Jake's got a report. What do you got, Jake? They lost on a walk-off. On a walk-off, right one at the nothing. end. one nothing on a walk-off. Uh, so uh, a tough one, one and two on the SEC weekend against You know, uh, regarding the softball, uh, and, of course, we have a great coach in Beth Tarina, and she's doing well. But, uh, but this domination in softball, first, uh, when I was uh, 20, if you go back over a little over 20 years, uh, you know, you couldn't beat Tennessee. Tennessee had this uh, six-foot-four left-hander, you know, that was just you, you couldn't beat. Them. And they were great for years. Then, of course, the coach, coach took over at Alabama. And boo, they were great. Yeah, Pat Murphy took it. Mean, Pat Murphy couldn't do any. Now everybody can play. See, the league has changed so much. Baseball, too. Watch that, fans. Everybody's getting better. They're catching us. See, they're coming after us. Uh, and uh, they're spending a lot of money. And they're getting good coaches. And But most of all, what it means is, is there's more softball uh, kids to recruit. There's more baseball players to recruit than there used to be. So yeah. I think you're seeing that in softball now. Boy, you softball's can starting to grow. I'm in the business now. Oh my God! Just and softball's starting. starting to grow. That's well, where the growth see is. Them. They're all up and, and down. They, and Every softball game is, is different. Softball is following what baseball did with travel sure. teams, private instruction, a lot of camps, a lot yeah. of people getting out, and uh, it's really good. And that's good for the ladies. Coach, you did one thing as an AD, though, with softball and with women's basketball, and we're seeing it more and more. As ADs get more and more into it, especially in the Power Five conferences, spend the money on the facilities, spend the money on the coaches' recruiting budget, and you can lose less money in those sports. So softball's got growth potential as far as attendance right. goes. Where our softball program, like gymnastics, like most of our other programs, uh, puts on a tremendous uh, event in a wonderful facility. And uh, they've had as many as 4,000. And, of course, I've said to the average might be, you know, 400 or 500 around the country. 
and uh, she gets 2,000, 3,000 a night. The Oklahoma game, they had the big game with the big red machine from Oklahoma. Boy, I mean, that girl is terrific. I mean, she's no doubt about it. You know, they won 31 or 32 games in a row. And, of course, she's got a few national championships, and they're rolling right now, and they lead the league in so many things. They can be the best at one time, Oklahoma. Well, that their coach, of course, is a 30-year coach, and so she has built it up. And I'm uh, glad to see that other people are playing well and drawing well. I'm glad to see that it's getting bigger and bigger, softball. Well, speaking about drawing well, we're going to women's uh, gymnastics. Uh, kudos. We're going to get Coach Jay Clark on there after he takes a little breather yeah, after a long season. And uh, they came in fourth nationally, mm-hmm. got to the, the, what do they call it, the uh, – Final four. Final four, but don't they have – they kind of have a different name for it, the mat, final mat floor or something. I don't know. They have a cute name for it. But anyway, they made the final four. Uh, the winner was Oklahoma. They won it. Uh, Florida came in second. And Utah finished third. LSU finished fourth. Great accomplishment. Jay Clark uh, went through the Jay Johnson injury bug. Uh, and uh, What a shame three. for Coach Clark because there isn't any question about it. He had uh, super – at least two now you know two for sure and one oh just walking off the stage oh i don't want to talk about it the girls are hurt and they're so good the two now he handled it well uh he did a lot of emotional things uh at least here he told him empty the tank girls go for it we got nothing to lose and uh, the girls did a very very nice job they had a still a hundred and uh uh, 97 and O plus, which is pretty good. But 197, they, 525. Yeah, 90, but they couldn't pass into the 198 that they would have needed, you know, to, to, to you know, be the champ. But that's how close it is. Don't, <laughs> it isn't like it's uh, first and fourth, but it's far. I mean, it's close between first and fourth. Very proud of Jay Clark. And all you ladies and people and all the fans in gymnastics. Man, I got a, got a feather uh, call out for Haley Bryant. She led the Tigers with a 39.725 oh, all-around score. Marks the best for an LSU gymnast at an NCAA championship in school history. And she ended the night on the vault with a 9.9875, which tied for the highest at an NCAA championship in LSU history. So... You know, and she's only a junior, so she's coming back next but, year. But, but there, there was a, Utah had a girl with a 28 tens, the most of anybody who ever made tens. Uh, Oklahoma, of course, has these wonderful uh, athletes in all sports, just like we do, having a good, good sports program. And won't we be seeing them in the SEC soon? Yeah, they're coming in, so it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> Florida, Oklahoma, yeah, and LSU in the top four. Yeah, look at that. What are they? Three <laughs> SEC schools potentially. Uh, good luck to Jay though recruiting. He's got people coming back. Oh, he's, he's going to have a good bug. I think the program's in great shape. And Jay, heck of a job, Jay, for what you did this yes, year. That's did. a tough, tough coaching job. Way to stay with it. And now to finish up talking a little bit about uh, what what went on this weekend. LSU went three and one in beach volleyball in the Bayou tournament, the last tournament of the season. Finished out the regular season, and uh, Russell Brock said, "Great uh, response to finish out the weekend." They end up going twenty-two and ten overall. They don't have any matches next weekend, and they prepare for the uh, CCSA tournament in Huntsville, Alabama, April twenty-seventh through the 29th. And coach. They're going to compete for national championships. Well, the, the, their record might be, what, 22 and 10 or something. Right. Uh, but now they're going to the playoffs. The playoffs. Remember those one or two game elimination games? Uh, the playoffs are everything. All right. And now that they're there, they've got to play well in the period, you know, to win the sets. And uh, they're good. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Another great team. Well, and to finish it up, men's basketball. Uh, Coach McMahon well, getting on the transfer portal, doing a good job getting his roster. A little more time than he had last year to try to get a roster together. But he brought home some guys. Jalen Cook from Walker, who was at LSU and transferred out to Tulane, now coming back to play. 
which is a great thing. Have a local kid. Got another local kid from Dunham, Jordan Wright, who was at Vanderbilt. He graduated from Vanderbilt, and now he's coming back in his uh, uh, fifth year. And he's coming back, uh, so he'll be back in town. And then a great uh, recruit from the University of Nevada, Will Baker, seven-footer in the middle. So, yeah, uh, he weighs 245, so he's not scrawny. <laughs> Right, but he, he, you know, what he's uh, must be a well-built uh, kid. It's that's that's that. That's wonderful. Yeah, the it's nice to have three solid players that have played you know, uh, some basketball. because without the portal, uh, he can't compete. You know, he, he doesn't have time to teach freshmen to be sophomore and to be juniors. He needs to get some people who can play right now, and that's what he's doing. That's what Coach Mulkey did, and that's what he's doing. Well. Folks, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come right back after this uh, with Hold the Rope with Skip and Kano. You're watching us on FM Digital Media. windows that we sell at Relief Windows is the Energy Star product. The reason why we're going to sell you an energy efficient window is we want you to save money or heating and cooling costs. We've even had some customers tell us that they've had their electric bills go from $350 to $200 a month. That's pretty wild. If RPMs raise your BPMs, if the open road is an open invitation, then get up and go. Go turn some heads. Go turn a wrench. Go windows down, go volume up. Go in, go out, go off. Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. Chena's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute! For a reservation, call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. Fat Tuesday's Casino, located in the Plaquemine Truck Stop on Highway 1 in Plaquemine, Louisiana. Come out to Fat Tuesday's Casino, where every day is a carnival. If you're ready to win some money, please visit Fat Tuesday's Casino in the Plaquemine Truck Stop, Plaquemine, Louisiana. Since opening our first Benny's Car Wash location in 1951, we continue to employ the latest in automated car wash technology, from the use of electronic sensor technology to the chemistry and engineering of cleaning agents. Over the years, our car care services have expanded to include detailing, oil changes, state inspections, along with Be Quick convenience stores and fueling stations. After seven decades of successful operations, we are proud to have nine locations serving the Baton Rouge area. For more information, go to Benny'sCarWash.com. Advanced Windshield has served the Baton Rouge area for over 20 years. They take pride in the two-technician system where we can ensure a proper seal every time. We will not compromise quality to cut costs by only having one technician in the truck. This also helps us provide quicker services than our competitors. We are dedicated to providing the highest quality work with the quickest service. Go to advancedwindshield.com or call them at 225-248-6788. That's advancedwindshield.com.
Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Ken. We're here live from the FM Digital Studios right here on Government Street. And now it's time to talk the business of sports brought to you by Blumberg and Associates. Blumberg and Associates specializes in mid to large size commercial accounts of all types. Whether you're in the market for business, homeowners, automobile, life, or health insurance, we can customize a plan that is as individual as you are. For more information, call 225-767-1442 or go to www.blumbergassoc.com. Well, we're back, and uh, we want to thank Blumberg Associates. Skip, it's time to put on your AD tie, which you look very good there in that AD yes. photo. And uh, <laughs> it's time to talk. But before you start talking, let's introduce our guest who's with us tonight, Bob Starkey from the Women's Basketball National Championship Coaching Staff. Bob, welcome aboard. Great to be back. Great to be back. I want to give you a little history here for people. Uh, when I came uh, to LSU and I was grinding – uh, next to Dale Brown's office uh, when I started yeah, with uh, another coach with me in the same office. I mean, I'm not like Dale's office. Uh, <laughs> and they had to get a guy, you know, and Dale said to me, i got to get a kid. This guy's great. He's, he can do everything. Meaning, you know, Dale, you got to write things down. you got to find it in the library. you got to research. You know, all things besides coaching basketball. And uh, which, of course, he did well. And uh, he's like, this guy, Bob Starkey. And that's where you started, in men's basketball, right? Yeah, it sure was. I worked for Dale for 13 years until he retired. And then Sue asked me if I wanted to come across the hall and work the women's side. And I love living in Baton Rouge. So we said, yeah. That's a great story. So, folks, now we're talking to a guy with 13 years' experience with Dale Brown and his coaches. And then we're talking years' experience with Sue, okay, and I guess that would be Pokey was there as Pokey an assistant. Pokey and, and then the Van. And, and then Van, okay. And then you traveled. Yes. Where'd you go? Went to Texas A&M for nine years. Uh, wonderful nine years. I enjoyed my time there and went to Auburn. I actually went to Auburn with the goal of, of coaching for three more years. They gave me to 65 and retire. And then uh, I was at the Final Four this time last year, and Coach Malky called me and said, hey, you want to come back to home and coach at LSU? So back here now, not even thinking about retiring. Boy, that's great stuff, Dan. That's great stuff. Because uh, the experience, folks, that the man has is like 30-plus years with different coaches. And you got to know that his – uh, knowledge of the bouncing of the ball, the playing and the footwork of the girls, the shooting and the techniques and the coaching. You got to know that he has all of that from so many different people. And these people have played Final Four <coughs> basketball before, Kim. So congratulations to you on this championship. Congratulations to you also on a great career. That's well, I appreciate wonderful. that, Coach. And you kind of alluded to it. I, I've been really blessed to work for some great people and obviously coach some great players, uh, but have worked for some great people. Uh, I learned so much this year working for Kim. <laughs> uh, she's a very detail-oriented person. She This is obviously her fourth national championship. So one of the reasons I came back is because I'm a continual learner, and I just want the opportunity to see how she does things. Oh. And it was incredibly impressive. I mean, every day she's on. Every day matters to her. Everything is important to her. And to watch her go through the day-by-day -day process of coaching, teaching, recruiting, being an administrator, all the things that go into being a head coach, as you know, uh, was absolutely fascinating to me. And, and, and you know, when we were – Finishing up and, and, and leaving the arena after that, I just remember thinking, well, I, I know how she's won four now. <laughs> yes. it, it's funny when, you, when you're around greatness. Yeah. I, you know, right. I went on a trip last year when I was working with TAF. You weren't there, but I saw Kim. We got on the bus, and I thought I was on a bus with Skip again. Yeah. And, and, it's, it's, and I told terrific. Kim, I said, greatness is real easy to recognize if you've been around it. And what's really yeah. neat about it is Kim and Skip never talk, but they all do the same things. And that's, yeah. I guess, what greatness is. It's not really hard, but it's hard to do. It's not hard to recognize, but it's hard to do. One thing I want to say to you, Bob, though, is 
my observation and knowing you and, and the program and being around LSU for so long, probably one of the greatest things you brought, I think, this year to the program is the alums coming back. And your tie-in, you were the bond that brought everybody, Simone, Sylvia Fowles, Tamika Johnson, yeah. Marie Ferdinand. The fact that they came back and they love you, you know, for when you coached them. And then Kim, of course, embracing them. I think that had a lot to do because the history of the program was brought back to these girls and this group of girls that really just got here. Well, I think that makes it really special. And again, I, I, I almost sound like a broken record, but uh, kudos to Kim. I, I mean, I, I, when we were playing LSU last year at Auburn, uh, before the game, Kim, Kim came up and, and we were just chit-chatting. I told her, I said, I know this doesn't mean much coming from me, but I want to thank you for opening the program back up to the former players. I can't tell you how many former players would call me or oh, email me or see nice. me and say, Coach, you don't understand. Coach Malky gives – I have her cell phone. We have a player, Katie uh, Anthony, Katie Varnado now, who played for us for one year, was a role player, uh, who told me, said, Coach, you know that one time I just sent a text to Coach Malky congratulating her, <laughs> and 30 <laughs> seconds later she texts me back. It's just unbelievable. It is, and, and, a machine. And, they love her. They absolutely love her. Now, it was nice that I came back and, and got to be a part of that, but credit goes to Kim for starting that ball rolling. We send our alumni a gift package every year with some T-shirts and a koozie and a ball hat in there, and we have alumni weekend. And Kim reaches out. When we go to another city, one of the things Kim will say is, how many alumni do we have in this town? Let's reach out, see if they need tickets for the game or if they want to come by the hotel. I mean, it's important to her, even though she never coached them or recruited them. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, That's a great. She's great. She is. That's right. If you, she, she wants to make sure the coffee's hot and the food's good. She wants to make sure alumni are there. They try to show her Joe and Jane Fan yeah. are there and that they're treated well and so on down the line. There is nothing – Besides coaching basketball, there is nothing that she doesn't do. And speaking in the community, that's a big thing for everybody. I know if that doesn't sound like what are, what's the trick play when you throw it in from uh, underneath the basket, how are you going to get the open girl? And I know all of those things are true. There's a certain amount of fundamentals. But the truth of it is you can't win without – the overall awareness of the people. Well, one of the things she has to when she came here is a monthly luncheon. And where was about three or four hundred people that come to those monthly luncheons? And she uh, she might she might sing a country song. Uh, she'll update them on recruiting. She'll talk about where she ate dinner. They they know her. That they, they feel like they're family. Coach, you'll love this. We had our banquet this week. Had over a thousand people at our banquet. I'm sitting beside her at the head table. She says, Bob pull out a piece of paper. We're going to jot down notes of things that we didn't get done at the banquet that we want to do next year. Yeah. I mean, it just never stops. Never stops. Never stops. Right. It gets bigger, bigger. And the good news is, like I said, uh, we're in between, there's, there's a lot of help <laughs> on your bench yeah. and in your staff and in the building from ladies basketball at the Zers. And of course, Kim has raised, you know, millions of dollars herself. Not to mention, she didn't give, they didn't give her everything. Yeah. I mean, she went, she went and hustled to do this. And now, of course, she gets a lot of the publicity because she's a national champion. And that's how it works. And people caught up to her, you know, last year, they were very impressed with Kim, of course. And now they're super impressed. And next year, it's high bar, folks. Yeah. She no, sets a high bar. Let me ask you this, Bobby. You said you, got, you did the banquet. I wanted to ask you about the banquet. 1,000 people there. Uh, what was the average ticket there? I have no idea. Yeah. You know, Skip said we've got 1,000 people on our staff. You know, when I worked for Sue, I had to do the banquet, the fast break club, <laughs> uh, you know, marketing and promote. Here, I, I just have to coach and recruit a little bit. It's a great job. It is. Well, it's well a good that, gig. That, that's but true. But they did have a live auction. They had a great time. Oh. People were very, a lot of pictures and everything. But Skip, as an AD, let's talk a little bit about the See, she, she, yeah. See, she, she, ladies basketball, can't make more money than they spend. 
although the men's program does because of the Final Four. Okay, but the women's basketball, if they have, like Dan says, they fill that place with 15,000 like they did, 13,000. And of course, they can lose less. Okay, which means that with all the money being paid out for all the coaches and all the players and everything, it doesn't cost our program that much money because people are coming in and paying to watch you play. It's a big deal. Well, you get more money back in the budget that way. Well, Where not only like that, but we're still, we're st- I still think we're in the early growth of women's basketball. I mean, we had 9.9 million people watch our national championship game, which was more than the LSU-Alabama football game, which was more than any NFL game. So <laughs> when you think back, there was a time – when some people would sit around and say, we're never going to make we're never gonna make money in baseball. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you did. That's right, right. So I think we're going in the right direction. I think. I, I think more people are watching it. I think TV revenue will go up. I think there's more advertising dollars there. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen maybe in my lifetime as a coach, but it's certainly gone in the right direction. But it's going. It, 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 I don't say it with a disrespect. Oh, sure. No, it's, that's a business that statement. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's a great How thing. much money comes back to LSU? Yeah, the from women's basketball. The fact that we're on the we're on the top right now, while the growth is there, and that you were part, your team was part of the one that really brought it to the national attention. I think this national championship was, as you said, with 9.9 million viewers, that just brought women's basketball to a whole new yeah. plateau. And with LSU in it, and the brand of LSU is so big, what a great thing. For everybody, for women's basketball and for LSU. Folks, we're going to take a break, but we're going to come back. We're going to talk more women's basketball, talk more finances when we come back. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano on FM Digital Media. Love something unconditionally. It's easy when it's Sammy's Fried Seafood. So unconditionally delicious. Sammy's better than ever. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Don't have time for a cold, a cut, those allergies, or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Lake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Bayou Apparel has been helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. As one of only a few local LSU official licensees, Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand. Whether you have an established brand or not, Bayou Apparel design experts can help you create an eye-catching design that fits your company's message. We do logos, event t-shirts, and promotional items for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to our website at www.bayouapparel.com. Start your new year off relaxed and renewed. Book a stay at the Glad Cook Hotel at LSU and enjoy a peaceful escape overlooking the University Lake, plus the best service in town. Book a midweek stay and you'll receive a special rate. Make your plans now to pack the PMAC for a Tigers basketball game or catch the Tigers baseball at the box or the Lady Softball team. Call 225-383-2665 to book a visit www.thecookhotel.com. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. 
Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Ken. And we're here live at the FM Digital Media Studios. We got Bob Stark. He's assistant coach of the Women's National Championship team, Skip Bourbon with us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the National Championship and, and some of the finances involved. Skip, when you were the AD, we won National Championships in football. Of course, baseball coach won the National Championships. Talk about the economic impact beyond just the attendance oh. of the National Championship. Well, one of the things is 10 million people watching women's basketball. First of all, it's really grown. I mentioned this about softball. That's really grown. Women's basketball's going through the roof. Okay. And of course, uh, as I've said before, got to repeat it again. Mulkey is one of the top three people in the history of women's basketball that's done more for women's basketball. Okay. And she's not done yet. And, and <laughs> she's not even close to being done. But you can't win more national championships than Ariama. You know what I mean? Or Pat Summit had eight. Yeah. Okay. I mean that that's that's a lot. Now the teams are much better. It's harder now. There's more good teams to beat. But and she's right there with it. And uh, many things to do. And I'm very proud. Tell me what well, Dan asked. Tell me about uh, we were talking about it between our uh, talking here. But we're off the air. Tell me about the popularity of ladies basketball from the time you were there oh. to today. You know, we had, uh, we had our championship parade when we came back. And they estimated close to 50,000, 60,000 people on the parade route. Wow. And I remember we walked into the PMAC, and the, the PMAC was almost full. I just remember sitting up on the stage. Remember, I coached games where there wasn't nearly this many people to watch a game, much yeah. less come out on the evening and just celebrate yeah. a team. Uh, there's the amount of heavy hitters in the community that want to be involved with your program right. and are willing to financially support us. Uh, the other part is recruiting. We're going to turn down some really good players because we have the ability to select who we yeah. want now. Uh, so it, it's it's wide ranging in so many things. It's 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 impacted our kids positively uh, with the NIL. I was going to ask about NIL. Yeah. How big is it now with NIL, which we never had with this national championship? And you're saying the heavy hitters in the community. That's going to really go into NIL and getting the best players you can get in the country. Well, the thing about it, it, it does the NIL feeds all the stuff. But winning a national championship creates uh, national brands wanting to make NIL deals with our players. Like we have That's several right. players that have deals. We, 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 we just had two kids come back from Miami. One kid was in Los Angeles for over the weekend uh, finishing NIL deals. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, sometimes now we have kids that don't ask about playing time or their role. Or <laughs> right. They want to know what's my NIL deal, NIL package going to be. So we, had, we can show that our kids are very marketable. Uh, Plus, uh, Bob, Kim, with her vision, hired, uh, moved up uh, a coach to be the director of NIL and, and, and Mark, what's the official title? Jen Roberts. Uh, she's in charge of influencing and our, our NIL director, and she does everything uh, from directing our kids, uh, from bringing NIL money in, working with companies. She works with our kids on a variety of things like taxes, budgeting, making sure you know how to take care of that money. Does she do branding with the everything? Girls? Everything and now, LSU has an amazing NIL department set it up by Taylor Jacobs. She's phenomenal. Yes, but be able to have Jen in our office on a day to day basis that works with our kids directly yeah. and with companies directly. And like you said, Kim was the first person to create that job, and at the right time because now you really need that job. Absolutely, it's already in place. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Skip, well, what about the economic impact though? You know, we talk about it. Bob, we talk about camps. The young kids want to get involved in growing in. And well, also skip T-shirt sales. Uh, well, know, the, the, the difference now, Dan, uh, Bob had said, well, sure, there's eight or 100 kids or whatever, which is unbelievable in you know, a short amount of time like that. 
But now the NIL has changed where all the money goes from those camps. So, and now, of course, some of it will have to be used, you know, by players that coach. Remember, it's only three days, right, the camp? Camp's four days. Four Monday days. Monday through Thursday. Yes, sir. Yeah. So they only have to coach a week, and you can give them X number of dollars, which is legal, and it's a lot. And I'm happy with that. I think kids ought to get as much as they punished. can. Back when we were playing, we got punished for having a kid work camp. Well, you we weren't, by the way, money back. you weren't allowed. Yeah. In my camps, we weren't allowed to have a kid who was a junior or sophomore, freshman, coach your team. You weren't allowed to. So, uh, you know, we had to find just people from the street. Sure. You know. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad I never had to do that. But and and now our baseball coach does that. But this women's basketball now, between Connecticut and South Carolina, and maybe Stanford, huh? Yeah. Now Iowa. Well, and, and of course Iowa, with the girl with the super stud. Uh, those people have now taken in a larger swath of the money for their school so they can pay the ladies. Well, there's always something about people want to support winners. You know, they, we, we have, uh, like I said, we have so many people that have really jumped on board, in, in part because of their love for Kim and their belief in her vision. Uh, I mean, it was there before we won the national championship. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's just, it's, it's like times 10 since we beat Iowa. Yeah. Bob, you're a big team building guy. We, you know, we've known each other a lot of years, talk a lot of coaching in the same building, same office areas. Tell me about how your staff, but Kim, took these group of women and built a team in such a short period of time because a lot of people can coach, like Skip said, the X's, the O's, the bounce and the basketballs, how to bounce plays, but how do you get them to play together? And it looked like a very cohesive bonded family unit that's to me is the hardest part of coaching tell us what what kind of things kim did and you did to make that happen well i'll, I'll say this it is increasingly more difficult now oh we, my we, God, we yeah. had nine new players and yeah. we're gonna have nine i mean you know you i was talking to buzz Porter. williams at texas a yeah. you're no longer trying to build a program right. you're trying to build a team each year so you have no chance right you gotta yeah. have a team you, you you've got to do it now the number one thing that kim does is she's a truth teller whether they want to hear it or not, that they know 100% where they stand. Uh, she every does, day. Every single, every moment. Uh, she's incredibly honest with them in terms of, of their, she's big on roles. Make sure you understand your roles. This is what your role is. If you want to expand your role, show me that you can do that in practice. Uh, she's a great communicator off the floor. Uh, I think we got an excellent staff of communicators. Uh, but to me, it just starts with number one, with the truth. Uh, and the expectations on a daily basis of this is what we expect from you, and she demands it. I said this before, uh, from all the coaches I've worked for, and I've been blessed to watch some amazing coaches uh, practice. I've watched Bob Knight, Dean Smith. You can. She's the best practice coach I've ever been around, wow. and that's good, just good not set. the teaching. It's the language that she uses at practice, and she knows how to plant seeds. Like it, it was funny after we won the national championship. I had a reporter ask me, when did you know you had a national championship team? I said, with about 30 seconds to go in the Iowa game. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because you, you just think day by yeah. day by day. You're not thinking national championship. Minute you're thinking, by minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah i got to have a good practice today. <laughs> right. And then you, you, you stack those, and then you got a chance. Well, every now and then, Kim, we, we've been having a bad practice with Kim. Goes, you know, it, it bothers me that some of you guys would even talk about a Final Four the way we're practicing. Or we'd have a great practice. And can I tell you something? That's the way a Final Four team practices. So she would plant those seeds as we go through the season, not just with the team, but sometimes with individuals. And uh, her language at practice in terms of uh, phrases or when she would stop and talk to the team, uh, it was just absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm sitting I would be at practice, I'm like, wow, this is how she does it. I mean, she's just a great communicator. Yeah, absolutely. You, you have to. When you, if you want to go to the na if you want to play on a national championship basis annually, you can't recruit freshmen every year. You got to recruit some older kids through the portal, 
Or you got to get junior college transfers, and baseball sure. would be the way to go at that time. So now you go to portal at any time, so you can get an older person to come in and move quickly. So she had all of these new people, and she had to put them all together and teach them that just the basketball move wasn't enough. See, that's that's what she can do. That's what national championship coaches can do. The just the route that they take to get to the basket and and wonderfully uh, beat somebody on defense. It's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, but and naturally you need that. Naturally you have to have good players. You can't win. But even with all of that, the players have to believe they can win the big one. Mm-hmm. Got to ask you something. Now this is tough, Dan, but it's. TV, we can handle it with Bob. (laughs) Ready? Uh, Iowa. Uh, What's the name of the girl? The really good. Kaylee Clark. Clark. Yeah, she's really good. She's the best. Isn't she coming back? She'll be back, yeah. Yeah. So as a three-point shooter, she's like the best in the country. Maybe the best I've ever seen. (laughs) You know, certainly. She's Steph Curry of women's basketball. Got some great analysis. Yeah, she spoke to Seth Curry and all. What happened to the ball game? That angered our team. What did she do that angered our team? Uh, she was disrespectful uh, to another player in another game that oh, had okay. played with one of our teammates. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. And well, I'm I mean, not sure. Uh, thank you for yeah. saying that. It's nothing bad, folks. Nobody did uh, anything bad. You know, when you're playing, a lot of times that, that happens. A lot of emotion. Boy, that happened last night when our home run hit her. Yeah, he got a little yeah. emotional. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, unfortunately, it was easy to see on TV what was going on. Well, down. it's all easy to see on TV. You know, emotions have always been around the game. There just hasn't yeah. been as many cameras yeah. to catch. Yeah, but the thing yeah. is, like on TV with Jared Jones, I'm sure that wasn't just something that came out at that moment. It There was some jockey oh, going well, on there before were, that. Well, right. In other words, what caused that was the fact that the pitcher – Quick, quick pitching, pitching. yeah. And he was angry. He got the temp. He didn't need a freshman. didn't really handle it. And he <laughs> hit the next pitch. He took care and of it. Hey, that's how you do it. And he did the right thing, of course. But uh, it, those things happen. Remember, come on. It's emotional. The highest emotion that these kids have ever had yeah. has been on that court. And they're kids. At the time, you're playing that. You know, the game. key with emotion is... You know, Doc Rivers has this quote, how hard can you play without losing your discipline? That's right. Can you be emotional and maintain your discipline? That's right. And I thought our team did a really good job of that. We, we, we were emotional, but we, we played well. We still executed. Oh, God, yeah. Bobby, I got a question for you. You talked about how Kim puts people in roles and everything. Let's face it, you won the national championship game because of your bench. Oh, certainly, I mean, and, and yeah. How, you know, wow. tell us how that went, keeping like the – Jasmine Carson was just un, un, unconscious – coming off the bench. But in those games, a lot of games, your bench had to carry minutes with your star players in foul trouble. Unfortunately, I'm going to say I thought the referees called a weird game because the best players weren't in the game all the time. The referees became part of the game. They didn't let them play. They weren't consistent. But what I'm saying is your role players won the game for you. No question, and Kim has made that comment. I mean, if if we were sitting here and we're getting ready to play Iowa and we say, okay, uh, Angel Reese is going to miss the last five minutes of the first half, and and uh, Alexis Morris is going. You know, your best inside player, your point yeah, guard. Right. You're like, well, this isn't going to end well. My God. Well, <laughs> we separated with them on the bench, mm-hmm. and it was because Jasmine Carson shot the ball well. Samaya blocked shots and rebound. Yeah. We got uh, a couple of big buckets from last tier Poa, but I really think in championship play, and you guys will know this better than I. That's always part of it, isn't it? There's always somebody that steps up, yes. the unexpected person that, that makes a play. They graduate. They step up. Yeah. At that minute. They grab that moment. At, and then that hour of that portion of the game, and whether it's baseball or football, they somebody steps and up. I, I'm going to say this from coaching with him, and, of course, you coach with Kim now. That's taught all year. Oh, absolutely. It just comes out when it's ta- It's not something that just happens. Yeah, that's right. It's taught and drilled into them all year because of the honesty, because of setting up their roles. They accept it. They get ready. And when they get their opportunity, they're totally prepared for that role. 
How about the combination of those three kids we just talked about? Jasmine Carson, fifth-year senior, experience. Uh, Samaya Smith was a freshman. Last year, Poe was a junior college player. So we had a portal, a juco, and a freshman <laughs> along those three. You're talking about the blend. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. It's a good point, Coach. Yeah. Well, Bobby, one, one other thing. Um, you guys took a big loss at home against South Carolina. On the road. Uh, on the road. I'm sorry, on the road. What took place after that to get them to, over that and move it on to the next place? Because that was a big loss. Like, sure. You were on a winning streak. You were playing. That was the game, and it wasn't good. It was a big margin. And how did, how did they handle that, and how did you keep it together all year? Because we know from coaching, as you start getting on that winning streak, you start playing, and you get your ranking and all that, that wears on the kids externally from the basketball when they go out in the community. How did you keep all that together? Well, the worst thing you do as a coach is waste a failure. I mean, you got to have the right mindset when you lose. And the first thing we did is we broke down the tape, found areas. Like, if you look at that game, we fell behind 18-2. to two. Real quick. And yeah. the absolute honest answer is we were freaking scared to scared, death. Right, right. Well, <laughs> the stage was too big for us well, at that point. We're ready yet. Yeah. It, yeah. it wasn't our time. We, we, needed, we had to play that game, and we had to lose that That's game right. in order for us to grow and move down the path. Um, and we, that, that's the way she framed it. Well, we cut the thing back to four points with about two minutes to go in the be. half. So we had a nice little run could of our have easily beaten right. Yeah, so we showed our kids that said, this is what you're capable of doing against South Carolina. Yeah. We just weren't tough enough. <laughs> and that, that's one more thing At Kim does. Time. She teaches toughness. Yeah, mental toughness. She teaches toughness. And so, and, and then that was it. You, we, we spent a day on it going over, this is why this happened. This is what could have happened. This is what you did well. And then we moved on. Yeah. Turn the page and let's get to work. You got to. You can't let it linger. And how did you keep together from that moment on, like keeping the run going and keeping everybody focused? One day at a time. Let's have a great practice today. Uh, let's get ready for the next opponent. Uh, you know, the thing that I thought that was pretty special about that team, because they had never been through that before, is we went through there with a fairly big target on our chest because we went undefeated in non-conference. And all suddenly we're in the top six or seven. So everybody's got a chance to be a top ten team in LSU. So we got everybody's best shot. I mean, South Carolina played their best game of the year against us. I mean, they're outstanding, but they were a notch. But they Played. cannot wait to get us there. Right, the Andy. place was juiced. It was. We took everybody's best shot, and I, that that got us ready for the NCAA tournament because we played some pretty good teams in the dance. Skip, let me say this, and, and Bob, you, you're going to like this question. Ready? One thing I see when you look at Twitter videos and things and little clips. One thing Skip always preached. You got to have fun with the kids when you're doing this. It looked like Kim, and, oh. and the, the kids really enjoyed having fun with Kim. She she would be hard on, but she'd have fun in practice. Oh, oh, Tell oh. us about that. Well, first of all, she's intense. She coaches hard, but she will yell encouragement <laughs> louder than she yells criticism. Right. I can't say that strongly enough. Somebody will make a play or do, and she will stop practice and go nuts about it. Uh, we got music at practice. You know, we're, we're stretching. Our kids are dancing. Every now and then, Kim will dance. Kim, she's playing uh, Merle Hager music in there and singing just to drive the kids crazy. Oh, but it's, it's, it's crazy. all of it, all of it. We have, we have guests at practice all the time uh, to talk to the kids. A few words here, a few words there. Uh, she, just, she doesn't miss an opportunity to teach or to connect in everything she does. So as hard as practice was, and I'll say this, so, you know, we start the season out in the first two months, we're practicing three, three and a half hours. We're down to 45 minutes when we get to right. February. Right. Now, it's an intense, hard 45 well, minutes. Let's get it done. She knows how to peel back. She, I'm, I'm, she's amazing. Yeah, I would think so. It's pretty good, Coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's great. Uh, remember, she doesn't have to win 10 more national championships. She's great today. And she'll be great for the next 10 years or however long she coaches. You can't measure it all by national championships. Yeah. Uh, bringing the kids back is just a wonderful thing for Scott Woodward, our AD, and all LSU people. Large crowds at home. It's a big, large crowds on the road. 
Yeah, we. It's we, amazing we had, how many people travel. We, we had travel four. Well. well, we had four road games this year, where those teams had their largest crowd. I mean it. After the game, and this this goes back to NIL. Uh, after the game, when our kids come back out on the floor to see their family, there be anywhere from five hundred to a thousand of the other teams' fans wanting autographs and pictures with our kids. Oh, that's nice. Wow. Let me let me say this, and before we we leave here. Skip, we talk about a lot on the show. Thank you because your program increased the brand of LSU and yes, the reach of LSU brand. It's a great brand. Don't you agree, Bobby? Coming it's the back best. Here. It's the best. We've wanted every sport at LSU at the highest level at some point in time. Uh, we Obviously in football, and I know that's, that's the big thing, uh, but when you look, uh, Coach's baseball program was a blueprint for our success when we made our five Final Fours. I wore you guys out asking you for advice on how to do this and do that. But you got gymnastics, you got softball, you got baseball. Yeah. I mean, you name it, we win at a high level. And it means so much. And this is, this is another Kim thing. Kim absolutely recognizes what winning means to the people in this state. That's right. And I, I'm just, it's not like that in every other state. I'm just no, telling I've does. been in other states. It's important, but it's not the same for the people of Louisiana. Yeah. It's wonderful for her to throw her hand down on the podium and say, Louisiana, that's us. Yep. See, she's from here. She played here. She's coached. I think it's a wonderful thing in every way. Absolutely. You know, you didn't have to give up a thing to be the national champs in view of personality or anything. She did it all with hard work and knowing what to do and having the right people like Bob and the others around her by recruiting and doing, working hard and doing what you have to do. You got to give her a lot of credit. Like the gymnastics coach did a lot of things. People get hurt. And he still did a great job. Sure did. Or the team did a great job. But with the two girls that he lost, I mean, it's incredible. Would have easily won the national championship. So we're there in just about every sport because of people like yourself and because, of course, people like Kim. Before we go, I want to say this, Skip and Bob, I'm saying it to you and Kim. The greatest thing that I saw with Skip and I see with Kim and you is you're yourselves. Mm. You know, you're not trying to be anybody you're not. Skip was always himself. Kim is just Kim. You see, when you yeah, see I it, think that's a big and I thing. think the kids pick up on the genuineness of that. And she's I the realest person you'd ever want to meet. She's just she's just who she is. She's unapologetic about it. Uh, but you know where she stands on everything. You know what she's passionate about, and uh, it Same makes a difference. Greatness yeah. is easy to spot when you sit, when you've been around, Absolutely. and they all do the same things. So thank you, thank you, Bob, for being on the show. Thanks, thank Bob. you for helping us. Build the brand at LSU and making this state proud because everybody's very proud of what happened. And well, thank thanks you. for having me. And thanks for coming back. Forever LSU. There you Not go. boy, Bob. Yeah. Thank you. Folks, we'll be right back after this. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Ken yeah. on FM Digital Media. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable Storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. Are you a baseball fan, LSU fan, sports fan, or success fan? Purchase your copy of Everything Matters in Baseball, the story of the building of the most successful college baseball program in history. This book details the path to the decade of excellence culminating in five national championships in 10 years at LSU. 
Starting from humble beginnings, Skip Bertman changed baseball to LSU, the SEC, and the entire college baseball world. Get your copy of this entertaining and inspiring story today by going to www.acadianhouse.sports.com. Doyle Electric has been impacting our community for over four decades. Established in 1978, our work helps to build a better quality of life for ourselves, our family, and friends in our community. Our success is built on core values of excellence, teamwork, integrity, and meritocracy. Committed to excellence, we'd love to hear about your upcoming project and figure out how Doyle Electric can help. Call us at 225-752-5112 or go to our website at www.doyleelectricinc.com. At Baker Gulf Coast Industrial, a full-service civil and deep foundations contractor, every day is a chance to play for the winning team. We're looking for first-string players to help us build the future of the region. Success on our field is defined by grit, tenacity, and the will to get the job done right the first time. You'll gain the advantage with steady work, excellent pay, and plenty of opportunities to advance. Apply today to join our team at BakerGCI.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com. Well, hi, folks, and welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. And now it's time for Skip's Extra Innings. It's brought to you by Marucci Sports. company founded and operated by current and former big leaguers, Marucci is dedicated to quality and committed to providing athletes at every level with the tools they want and need to be successful. Embrace the game. Show your style. Add your flair. Put in the hours. Stay dedicated. And most importantly, honor the game. Marucci Sports. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back. And uh, we want to thank Marucci Sports for their help here. And, of course, it's time to talk some baseball. Coach, your wheelhouse. It was great talking national championships with Bob Stargy, uh, but it's time to talk about the Kentucky series. And I skip, didn't, I recap didn't, the weekend for us, what you thought. Okay, well, I didn't miss a pitch. Now, you got to understand, uh, uh, a TV counts here, if I'm saying <laughs> I, <laughs> It's probably you, you miss less pitches. When you're watching on TV than when you're at the game for you. Well, I, you know, at the game, i got to take a lot of pictures, be able to talk, write this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's hard to watch everything, you know. So at home, by myself, you, know, you can see everything. Um, let me let me give you what you asked for, Dan. A little recap. Uh, well, yeah, what is a 50-year coach, you know, 60-year coach, what does he think about this past weekend – with Kentucky, number one is we had 11,000, over 11,300 on on uh, first night, Thursday, no, Friday. Thursday night. Uh, no, we did, but not on Thursday. It was Friday. Okay. Thursday was 11,061. And what was Friday? Friday was 11,675. Yeah. And then s- Saturday with yeah. the rain yeah. was 1,000. Uh, 10,912. Yeah. Okay. When it, when, it, when it gets to 11,000 plus, that means that the stadium is filled, okay, and that there's walk-ons that are standing atop on the second floor. The noise level is tremendous at 11,000 plus. See, the noise level at 9,000 or 8,000, like, we had this probably this last game of actual people in the seats uh, isn't as loud. And a lot of the kids say, you know, I take that energy from the stands. So fan portions are very important. So Jay <laughs> has done a lot of speaking out in the community. Uh, he's everywhere, uh, kind of like Kim Mulkey. And we're trying now, of course, to be like Kim on the uh, actual event. 
Uh, right now, Dan, <clears throat> we have had injuries. Ooh. Uh, pitching injuries. Ooh. Uh, poor guy, you know, like, uh, I don't but remember. Part of it. When I remember, yeah, but I don't remember many pitching injuries when I was coaching. I don't know what the difference was. Maybe no travel ball. Kids weren't throwing, uh, pitching in 70 yeah. games on a weekend. Yeah, I think uh, maybe when they that were 13 was 13 years old. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with the coaches. The injuries, uh, uh, that I don't think it has anything to do with the, play, the coaches. I think that uh, they swung the bat, they compete hard. To win, every batter competes hard uh, to make sure that he accomplishes something. And on defense, they've improved. Now, on the second game, they we had two errors or a non-played ball that wasn't an error, and we lost. But yesterday, they had three errors. And we won seven six. See, errors are unbelievable. Or non-played defensive balls are unbelievably important. How many outs does the pitcher have to pitch? In other words, if you if he strikes somebody out and he gets a line shot and Dylan Cruz runs it down, there's two outs and it's a, we're going for it. And then in the th next guy gets a base hit. Then the next guy <laughs> walks. And it's a bad inning for the pitcher. We we have to be able to get a pitcher that can go three up, not three down, although Christian Little did that for three innings. Coach, uh, you know, naturally tried to stretch it to four, but that didn't work. The other team is really good. Uh, Dan, I'm going to say uh, Kentucky's one of the better coach teams uh, that I've seen there. When you say better coach, Coach, explain what you're talking about. <laughs> Like uh, people, don't, you know, the, the general. They, person. they're they're always ready. They're <clears throat> they're always standing in the right position on defense. They had a wonderful shift. They were in the right place. Offensively, yes, they can bunt, like everybody says. Yes, they've got a lot of stolen bases. But I mean, it's tough to bunt every time. And right, but these guys can lay it down. You can tell they've worked real hard. They can steal, but Malazzo threw a guy out. So that really takes pressure off the pitcher. Say, so how many outs does the pitcher have to throw? Can you make a great play in the field to help the pitcher out so the pitcher can throw less pitches that inning? And if he slips up, okay, there's nobody on and they walk somebody. But we still walk too many. We hit too many batters. Uh, when you talk about well coached with Kentucky, uh, Running the bases, they run the bases well. Not just uh, very, very stealing, good. But yeah, they very take good base the runners. Base. They don't make outs on. Very the good on defense. Uh, they were never threw the ball the wrong place. Is what I mean. They, they were real good. Uh, they're very well coached. They don't uh, have a great pitchers uh, any more than we do, except of course for the big guy and Paul. But uh, otherwise, we we got to pitch up. We got to. Get that better. So uh, if you're looking at our team, things we need to improve on and things we do well. Tell us those two things. Well, here's two. what we, we're no doubt about it. While we're not the tops in the SEC, like South Carolina might be way ahead in certain areas. They have a small ballpark and they've been home a lot. Okay, they could be ahead of us. But the truth is we hit. Okay, we can hit one through nine. All right, we can hit home runs. Okay, we got people you can't pitch around. Uh, Dylan Cruz, because Tommy White is just too good. All right, uh, we're real good there. And, of course, we're great when Paul Skeens pitches. All right, now, after that, uh, in spite of the fact that we saw uh, Bryce Collins do a wonderful job with uh, two and a third to win it for us, Yesterday, that's the first time uh, Bryce has done that. Now you got to do that a couple more times. Then we need another pitcher to do that, and then another one, because you can't do it right now. Our pitching is not strong enough after Paul Skeens. Coach, one of the things uh, you know when when you were coaching that that I know that was big with you is 
in order to really feel confident about a guy going on the mound, you had to do it three times in a row. Well, why don't you explain why that? Three what that times means is, if you pitch a good game on Saturday, and you don't pitch till next Saturday, you got to do another good game. Now that doesn't mean you have to win. You just have to pitch well. Okay, that means you got. Generally speaking, that means go seventy-five pitches, get us in through the sixth inning. Okay, if you can get us through the seventh, we love you. Okay, we're, you're going out to eat. We love you. Okay, but that's what we need from you as the pitcher. And then, of course, there's a closer. And then there's the end of the guy who's a stopper. The Tums guy, the relief guy. The fireman, the guy comes yeah, in. Yeah, the fireman. I mean, this guy should be good every time he goes out. Okay, that doesn't mean he wins every time. Okay, that doesn't mean that. That means he delivers good pitches. He never loses his composure. Uh, his motion doesn't take him. And uh, we see. I, I'm looking at now. There's just so many uh, pitches that are <clears throat> have to be blocked. And Milazzo did a great job all weekend. Um, uh, you know, pitches that he had to reach for that were out of the zone. You know, they weren't close. We walked too many. We hit two batters, too many batters. Uh, evidently, uh, other teams are good. If you deliver a pitch right down there, you know, they can hit it, of course, just like us. Uh, Dan, we're, we're really good. Uh, we're, we're number one in the country. Okay, how many polls? Yeah, uh, talking to Herb Vincent in the SEC uh, office, we, we had a conversation before the weekend started. And there's been 58 polls. His sports, his information department in the SEC office did this. 58 polls so far up until uh, the weekend. Of the 58 polls, LSU's been number one in all 58 polls. All right, that ought to be 59 tomorrow. Okay. Because now here's, here's before the weekend. Two out of three. Now, before the weekend started, if that was the case and they started the SEC tournament, LSU, oh, yeah, yeah. LSU would have been the sixth seed in the SEC tournament playing on Tuesday morning. Okay, right. That tells you a couple of things. One, the strength of the LSU brand and the history that this man to my left built and the fact that it's LSU and you're supposed to be number one. Well, we're, we're Also, the, the, the level of talent that's at LSU. That you get everywhere. And uh, yeah. what Jay Johnson's done, we got to give him credit. It's not whether Jay Johnson – coaches them better than the Mississippi coach, Mike Pienko. I mean, that's – or any other coach. That's not what this is about. They're all coaching them well. The question is who's going to improve, who's going to stay injury-free, who's going to graduate and step up so you can move along. Uh, right now, like – Bryce Collins did. He did a great job of stepping up last night. We need more and more. Another guy stepped up as B- Belozo. Uh, stepping more. up. Well, here's the other thing I wanted to say about that uh, the, the, the stat 58 times. Uh, the strength of the SEC, <laughs> you'd be number one in the country and you come be in the sixth seed in your right, own we, tournament. Right. But it's early because Kentucky's got to play more people. Uh, right. All, all we need is. Play more people. It's all we need is out. two more weekends. Yeah. For that to change. Right. It's all going to settle. Yeah, it'll all be over as soon as we just started very strong. And had tough teams to play. Against some beautiful teams. But I just don't think there are any weak teams in spite of their records. But uh, we can fight you at home. Like, I don't know, on the road, uh, I'm worried if they take off as they will. You know, on the road, uh, you know, they don't have the... 10, they don't have our 10,000. They well, they go to Oxford. They'll have about 12 there. Oh, they'll have 12 at Oxford. Uh, and we'll have two we'll or have three people. people. It's a, they can drive there. Yeah, because that's a less than five-hour ride and a wonderful ballpark. Skip one more other question. Injuries. You know, people, LSU, we get a lot of injuries. People, oh, what happened? What happened? Injuries happen, Okay. Tell the folks your philosophy on injuries, and let's bring this out, folks. When Warren Morris hit the homer, not only was he injured and didn't play for most of the year, 
but also Trey McClure was his backup, and he got injured the first day he went in to replace Warren, so we played. Injuries are part of it. I think Jay's done a good job of preparing guys to fill in those roles. Talk about how you deal with it mentally and as a coach with injuries. Well, the, the, the gymnastics team and Jay Clark know next man up, next woman up, you got to get somebody to step up and take that spot. Like Dan says, we had it going for Warren Morris. <laughs> yeah, McClure b- bounced the ball off his knee from his bat, and then he was going for the year. And then we put a real true freshman in there. Casey and that, Kuntz went in. Casey Kuntz. And that was tough. I don't mean it's Casey, he's nothing wrong. Casey, he's tremendous. But uh, he had to go <laughs> as a freshman. That's tough. Uh, it's a, uh, a ball game that's longer and harder than one weekend or especially one series or just one game. Like if it's split and now you're in the third game, who wins, takes two out of three. I know that's important. It is. But it's not the end of the, the, of the year if you're Kentucky, for instance, and we win, they didn't. It's not the end of the year. Well, folks, we're going to take a break. We're going to come right back after this. Jake's got questions from the people in the audience. We're looking forward to it. And we're going to come back with Ask Skip and Cantor. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cantor on FM Digital Media. Sammy's Famous Cheese Sticks are the bomb. Sammy's better than ever. Have you been issued a ticket for texting, speeding, or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Lake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Every one of the windows that we sell at Relief Windows is the Energy Star product. The reason why we're going to sell your energy efficient window is we want you to save money on heating and cooling costs. We've even had some customers tell us that they've had their electric bills go from $350 to $200 a month. That's pretty wild. Everybody's got a guy, and I got a guy. That's right. They can handle monthly maintenance around your business or home with their professional team members. Ask us how to get set up and what plans we offer. I got a guy. One call for most trades. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us. Our skills are broad across many, many trades. Hourly rates are available. If you want one of our team members for a couple of hours, we can get that done. We can execute everything from house calls to running errands. I got a guy. Call 985-662-0025 or send an email to info at igotaguyservice.com. University Lake, plus the best service in town. Book a midweek stay and you'll receive a special rate. Make your plans now to pack the PMAC for a Tigers basketball game or catch the Tigers baseball at the box or the Lady Softball team. Call 225-383-2665 to book a visit. www.thecookhotel.com. Established in 1996 with over 125 years of industry experience, American Rigging and Supply fabricates and distributes lifting products to construction, transportation, oil field, petrochemical, manufacturing, aeronautical, crane, and rigging companies. Our product line includes wire rope blocks, sheaves, chains, tie downs, hoists, and cordage, rigging tools, spreader bars, special lifting devices, and more. We also fabricate nylon and polyester web slings, wire rope slings, wire rope ladders, alloy chain slings, and transport grade chain tie downs. To request a quote, call American Rigging and Supply at 225 344 7144. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Canada. We're here. 
back after the Easter break. And now it's time for Ask Skip and Cano. And it's time for Jake from State Farm. He's got these uh, questions. Jake, tell him what's coming up. All right. First question. This is from Josh. So both of you Where's are... Where's Josh from, Jake? Oh, he's from Prairieville. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so both of y'all are pitching coaches by nature. What would be y'all's message to the team this week going into practice, coming going into Oxford, after how messy it was this weekend? Okay, well, uh, the, the, the answer to the question I mentioned already, they didn't pitch well, mm-hmm. except, of course, the big guy. Yeah. The big guy struck out 13. I don't care if he gave up a few runs. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, he was wonderful, and he'll be wonderful again. But we haven't done well consistently with – any other pitcher and of course we're trying them all coach is trying them all it's got nothing to do with coaching like it's got nothing to do with the coach telling him that we've got the coach the problem is that the tension level at lsu to pitch is huge through the roof and even a junior like ty floyd feels that when he goes out there and uh He's real good, and he's being coached well, but they have to graduate. They have to perform. So the answer is uh, I'm not going to tell them anything bad. I'm just going to keep working with them, and I'm going to keep putting them out there, and I'm going out by out until I can see some consistency, and I want them to do what Bryce Collins did last yesterday. What about you, Ken? What is your message? Well, I think the message, the biggest message is let's punish the strike zone. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'd rather see a guy hit the ball than, yeah, than can... walk or get hit with a pitch. And yeah. so I think that's that's the biggest thing that Coach West Johnson is going to be stressing this week. And that's something the guys should be aware of and working hard towards. All right, next question. So uh, both of y'all, you're from Coral Gables, South Florida, Miami area, and you're from Jersey and then went to Miami. What was the culture sh- shock like for y'all coming to Baton Rouge? Because it's like its own little world over here. Uh, the culture shock for me was large. <laughs> um, you know, I had never been anywhere but Miami. I grew up there all my life uh, with my wife and my four kids and so on. And I came here at age 45. And, of course, the baseball was weak. Mm-hmm. The athletic department was weak. Uh, fans were weak. And, of course, I heard about Dale Brown. Got to do what he did. Well, we got to do more than what that. Dale at least had a gym. <laughs> you know, uh, we had to build a field. You know, and we had to put the right clay down. We had to buy bats and bowls. Uh, it was very, very difficult for me. It was somewhat of a culture shock. But the people that I did pick that would help us were wonderful people. Uh, Most people here are just so wonderful, much better than Miami, are so wonderful, okay, that no matter what happened to me in the beginning, I don't even remember anymore. It's been wonderful. The people have been great. Okay, I'm going to give you this one, Jake. I I came from upstate New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From, uh, as Skip would say, when I went to Miami to play, I came from nowhere New York, okay? And where I grew up, I was in a small farming dairy farming, corn growing community in the Berkshire Mountains. Okay, very small town. So I knew about small towns and everything. But then I went to Miami, and of course that was a culture shock in itself for me. And then, But then coming to Louisiana, it was kind of like right in the middle of the two. And here's what I tell people, and this is the truth. You know, when we would recruit people and come in from out of town, I'd say, you know, people think that oil and gas are the largest natural resource in Louisiana. It's not. It's the people. Okay, they're wonderful. And I grew up in upstate New York. You could live in the north. You could live next to someone for 20 years and not know the name of their daughter. You grow up in Louisiana. You come to Louisiana. Within 13 minutes of walking in the door, you know, everybody that's next door and they've already have you eat and you better eat or they'll be upset. Or a lot of love you like family. It's the greatest place in the world for people. Wonderful place. All right, next question, back to baseball. So what is y'all's outlook for the right field spot when Kling gets healthy? Do you think his athleticism and defense is more valuable, or do you think Joe Bear's bat is more valuable? I, I'm going to start. I'm going to think that in that situation, I think it's going to be a combination deal, kind of like what he does with Trey Morgan and some other things, meaning depending on who he's playing, Jay's going to match up. 
I think if it's a left-handed pitcher, for sure it's Kling. But well, I think well, make I think you may go offense with Joe Bear and Kling, Kling late for defense. Yeah, Kling is hurt. Mm-hmm. This is when he gets healthy. Okay, so he'd healthy. have to be healthier. You know what I mean? He's not bad. He, he's hurt. All right, he pulled a hamstring uh, and a ball game, making the catch in right field. All right, so he's got the injury thing working. He's a great one. All right, on the other hand, <coughs> the experience of Joe Bear, the experience of Josh Pearson, so you make a lot of difference in these ball games. So I'm not going to say anything yet because you have to be at practice uh, question asker, you got to be at practice. See what the guy did. Um, you gave him off on uh, this week on Sunday. He practiced. How do you do Monday? How do you do Tuesday at the game? How do you do Wednesday and Thursday? Well, Thursday's next game. And you got to watch that and see. So I don't know how they're doing a practice. Oh, sorry, by the way, that was Bill from New Orleans. Completely forgot to say your name. My bad. So, uh, next question. This is from Eric and Bro Bridge. Do you think LSU has the vocal leadership on the field to win a national championship? If so, who do you think that vocal leader is? If they, if they don't win the national championship, <laughs> it, it, you know, it won't be because they weren't vocal or they didn't have anybody. Right now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that uh, Dylan Cruz. The number one pick, the greatest guy, maybe one of the greatest players to ever play at LSU baseball. Oh, absolutely. He's tremendous. Has a great voice, meaning he's great in the clubhouse. Uh, uh, Beloso. And Uh, Duga, by example. In his fifth year in Duga. Mm -hmm. His fifth year. Those guys do well uh, verbally and emotionally. Plus, there are others. Everybody is good that way. I'm Jay say, doesn't have a problem. Coach, pitching coach doesn't have a problem. Everybody's mentally a, a stud. Everybody's been after, just like Kim Mulkey talks to the people. Jay does that. The other coaches do that as well. I'm going to say this. One thing's talking to the players and everything. On the pitching staff, Paul Skeens is a leader. And, of course, being from the Air Force Academy and everything, yeah. the way he is, his personality, they all look up to him. He's a great teammate. He's, he's so great. there's no problem. I think that's a little over. They've got plenty of people. Right. We don't have it. There, there is no problem with LSU mentally. But I'll tell you, Jay, Jay does a good job. Uh, the kids are fired up. I know that. I see them. Uh, I know most of them are fired up. Uh, that won't be it. The question is, will our arms come through? Will we continue to hit a clutch and get that homer when you have to have it? Like we had two from J.J. at first base, you know, two different homers. And, you know, without that, we don't win the game. Nobody on base but two homers. So home runs are big, as everybody knows, but timely hitting. Got to have it. Next question. This is from Steve from Plaquemine. Kind of a reoccurring question we've had the past few times. What is y'all's outlook for the Sunday starter moving forward? Christian Little looked very good in his first three innings yesterday, but lost it at, in the fourth. Uh, I'm going to say you got to be at practice. You got to see him in the bullpen. It's still yeah. a, it's a, wait, wait. it's a question that goes he, on and on. I think Jay's got to win game Friday night. He's got to win Saturday and then deal with Sunday when he deals with Sunday. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the way you got to go with it. You know, he's got to pitch uh, not just inning by inning, but out by out. Like you'll see him move people in and out, and he'll do. He's pretty good at uh, Jay and the pitching coach um, uh, at moving kids in and out, like having them ready in the bullpen. Boy, he's got a nice instinct for that as opposed to leaving the kid out and give out six runs. All right, next question. This is from Ty in Prairieville. Earlier you mentioned the fireman guy, the guy who puts out the damage. Who do you think that guy will be for LSU this year? Coach, I'm going to go with when he's healthy, he's shown that he can do this is Ackenhausen. But we don't know if he's going to be healthy. Well, Ackenhausen, another injured player, doesn't have a bad arm. He's a junior college transfer with a big left-handed breaking ball strike. He's terrific. And Jay loves him. He's hurt. 
you know, the injury. Now, he has something wrong uh, in his back and in his leg. Now, when that comes back, I think he'll be now. He's a stopper, closer guy that we're looking for. And I think if he was healthy, we would have seen him quite a bit already. All right, next question. This is from Chase. This is the last one, too. Oh, okay. Well, pick your best one, Jake. <laughs> my best question. Um, this is from Robert and P- Baton Rouge. What is y'all's outlook for the Ole Miss series? Well, Ole Miss, you can look at their record, and uh, you can throw it out the window when LSU goes to town, like Bob Starkey said, and like we know, there's a target on LSU's back. They're number one in the nation. It's a big rivalry for the Ole Miss people, even more than the LSU people. Just, just, just make sure. We do the one thing that's necessary that's not as hard for us as it is for the other team. Win Friday night or Thursday night uh, with Paul Skeens. Now, he did. He has lost one in some unusually close ball game, and, of course, that, that's going to happen too. But, uh, see, when if, if they'll throw their ace against Paul and we win, then we don't have to face as many good pitchers for the other two guys. I was going to say the one thing, talking to Mike Bianco, his guy, uh, Hunter Elliott, that won the national championship, he's still out and may not get in back yeah. in. Yeah. So the fact is they lost their Paul Skeens. Mm-hmm. So we have an advantage on Friday night, uh, and it backs up through Sunday. So I think we match up pretty good. We'll take a break. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kid's playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. If you live on the North Shore of Lake Pontchartrain and you have a son or daughter that plays baseball or softball, you need to know about Six Rings Baseball Academy. We now offer baseball and softball individual instruction, instructional camps, team cage rentals, and memberships at our new indoor facility. Run by Dan Canterbury, Six Rings will teach baseball skills, play instructional games, and have fun playing the great game of baseball. Go to our website at www.sixringsbaseball.com for more information on our baseball Baseball and softball offerings. Six Rings Baseball. Learn the game to love the game. As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. Chena's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute! For a reservation, call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. 
A little of this and a little bit of that can lead to a lot of this. But you'll get the perfect mix every time with True Fuel Engineered Fuel and Oil. This month at Napa, pick up a 32 ounce container of True Fuel starting at just $6.99. Simply open, pour, and go. With ready to use True Fuel, start after start, you'll keep your outdoor power equipment running its best. Napa! Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back for the final segment of Hold the Rope. And uh, we've got some odds and ends coming up. And, Coach, quickly here, uh, OBJ signs with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Odell still, Beckham Jr. Still can play. Still can play. Father was a great athlete. Mother well, was a got better a brother. Athlete. Yeah, best athlete. Father was a great athlete when I was uh, coaching. Uh, yeah, he can play. Had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, had a lot of offers to go other places. Had a knee injury, yeah, overcame an injury. it. injury. But I think, yeah, Baltimore. Maybe he knows something about the quarterback situation. <laughs> but uh, I think that's a good spot for him. He's got a nice contract, and hopefully, he can come back as an LSU guy. Talking about an LSU guy, Wayne Sims, who very played smart. when you were coaching. Very sad, passed away at fifty-four. Of course, that family's been through a lot with. Uh, Whoa, boy, talk. With the son passing away and. Uh, uh, feel for that family, and our condolences go out. God, to, uh, we Mrs. wish Sims. prayers for the Sims family once again. So, folks, we're going to be back next week. Our guest is to be determined. We're kind of like the Sunday starter at LSU. <laughs> okay, but uh, we'll come back next week. We'll recap, you know, the baseball uh, weekend at Old Miss, and uh, we'll have a guest for you. We're just not sure who we're going to get right now. We're coming back off the holidays, but we thank you for watching. Catch us next week from 6 to 7.30 here on Sunday night. You've been watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano on FM Digital Media. A burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it too. Sammy's better than ever. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable Storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. Every one of the windows that we sell at Relief Windows is the Energy Star product. The reason why we're going to sell your energy efficient window is we want you to save money on heating and cooling costs. We've even had some customers tell us that they've had their electric bills go from $350 to $200 a month. That's pretty wild. Start your new year off relaxed and renewed. Book a stay at the Glod Cook Hotel at LSU and enjoy a peaceful escape overlooking the University Lake, plus the best service in town. Book a midweek stay and you'll receive a special rate. Make your plans now to pack the PMAC for a Tigers basketball game or catch the Tigers baseball at the box or the ladies softball team. Call 225-383-26. Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Gidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Daigle, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffitt, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201-9300. That's 201-9300. Established in 1996 with over 125 years of industry experience, American Rigging and Supply fabricates and distributes lifting products to construction, transportation, oil field, petrochemical, manufacturing, aeronautical, crane, and rigging company. Our product line includes wire rope, blocks, sheaves, chains, tie-downs, hoists, and cordage, rigging tools, spreader bars, special lifting devices, and more. We also fabricate nylon and polyester web slings, wire rope slings, wire rope ladders, alloy chain slings, and transport grade chain tie downs. To request a quote, call American Rigging and Supply at 225 344 7144. 
Thank you for watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Tune in next Sunday at 6 p.m. or go to YouTube at any time to watch another edition from FM Digital Media.